Hey, welcome back to Empowering DIY. I know it's been a long, long time since I've done a video. Uh, but really, life has happened, changed jobs, all that other mess, so it's been really busy. Uh, so I've actually been really excited to do this video. Uh, it just took some time to get the materials up. Long story short, we have a new trailer. Uh, we race RC cars for a hobby, me and my son. And uh, we had a smaller 7x10 single axle trailer. And we had a little standalone ducted uh, air conditioner inside. That was great for that trailer. Well, when we bought this trailer, this is an 8x14. Um, that little trailer, that little AC just couldn't keep up in that trailer. And it's black. So that doesn't help. It's, the sun just radiates. It's really hot. Like this actually like hot to the touch. Uh, so I did a little bit of math. And it's insulated, and I'll show you inside here in a minute. Um, it's plywood and insulation and sealing and everything. So a 12,000 BTU unit should adequately keep the trailer cool. Now, when I'm in cool, I'm expecting 75 degrees at, like, 60% humidity. Uh, I'm not expecting 72 degrees at 50% humidity or anything crazy, but just comfortable enough to survive a day of racing. Um, so I install HVAC. Or I used to for a living. Uh, now I sell stuff, so I kind of went out of my comfort zone and I bought a cheaper unit um, off eBay. So a lot of the stuff I'm going to show you is what I'm hoping to be a true DIY system, um, and I'm hoping to give some professional insight um, from you know being a professional installer. So all that being said, I know YouTube is full of keyboard warriors, that's fine, y'all can critique me to every little way, but you gotta remember this is a ultra budget build on a trailer that we use twice a month, what, five months out of the year. So, all that being said, this isn't gonna be 100% uh, perfect, I know. But, long story short, we have 12,000 BTU mini split, that I went with the heat pump, so we do have heat for the cold races. Um, and then I bought a wall mounted bracket we'll hang it on the wall and I am having to upgrade the electrical system right now we just have a uh, extension cord ran to a couple outlets so for this I'm gonna make the electrical safety it's a little bit safer and add a, uh, a panel uh, so long story short let me uh, let me show you what the truck looks like jackknife um, and I did that on purpose um, that way we can kind of see where I need to set the bracket so it doesn't hit the bumper so that that'll be the next clip and then after that we'll uh, get started on installing so hang tight all right so I got the truck hooked up and almost jackknife of course I don't want to go too far and actually jackknife it but it's pretty close for comfort the whole purpose of me doing that is it's probably hard to tell on the camera but the bumper obviously sticks out farther than the the um bed of the truck right so i want to make sure that the rails of the ac are above the bumper so if i happen to get this close which again is way farther than i ever want to be but if i do i want to add this amount of distance from the ac brackets um so i don't hit so now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take a marker and a straight edge and I'm going to mark it right there and just make sure that my brackets are above that point. So, again, just giving me a little bit more room just for emergencies. So, let me uh, get the trailer parked and uh, we'll start setting everything up. Alright, so now that you've seen how the trailer looked jackknifed, um, I made me a little line right here. So, what I'll do is I'll take my level and go across and... Here's the brackets. Clayton, you want to hold that up? We'll hold the bracket. Basically, um, now what I need to do is make sure it's square with the trailer because the trailer is sitting on an angle. So I can't level it um, to, the, to the ground right now. So I'll level it to the trailer and I'll just measure up from the bottom of each side and down from each side and make sure it's straight that way. Um, so, as you see, I got my air hand or the line set out. The air handler sitting there. Um, it's got a mess in here. Haven't been in here in a while. So what we got to do is I want to move this screen there 
and I'll move some of that junk around. Um, and then what I'm going to do is take all this stuff out of the way. We're going to mount the air handler there, <clears throat> run the line set down. So when we had the little air, air conditioner, put a battery over it, cover the hole. I had it sitting there and we had it ducted out. So what I'm going to do is run the line set underneath the trailer up through the hole and up to where the air handler goes. That way I can utilize the existing hole and then I'll just seal it up with a rubber or foam or something. Um, and I'll run my drain line out through there too. So next step, get all this junk out of the way, get that down and we can start making plans on how to mount the uh, air handler. So there's no need to watch that. So let me uh, turn the camera off, get all this done and I'll start going to the next step. All right, who in their right mind decided to install an AC in the middle of the summer, right? I think I'd learn after doing this for a living. Anyways, uh, let me flip you around and show you what we got so far. All right, so I'm standing at the door. Kind of hard to explain, sorry. All right, so I'm standing at the door here. I've taken the workbench out, and this is no credit of my own. A buddy of mine, John, who sold me this trailer, built these workbenches, and I really want to show you this real quick. These, uh, you can buy these to go in these easy tracks, and it makes it so easy to pull this workbench out. It is incredible. The only thing I'm gonna do, I think, is I'm gonna lower these down a few inches while I got it apart. But anyways, very cool, very cool idea, John. Thank you for that. Anyways, took the TV off the wall, as you can see, and I have opened up the air handler here. Um, now, this is new to me, because again, I'm doing a DIY AC. Let me turn this fan off. I'm doing a DIY AC and all this stuff come pre-wired. That's, that's unusual to me. Okay, so usually I wire all this stuff myself, um, which is nice, I'm not complaining. Um, I just hope this wire is gonna be long enough and I think it will be. And then the other thing is, my, my dislike about something being pre-terminated is if the wire's too long, then you then you see people with bundled up wires, and that's not going to fly with me. So I'll cut it shorter and re-terminate it. But I want to let you know a trick. I don't know about all of them, but most of them, and we're about to find out on this one. You can take this cover off right here and make it way, way easier to install that on the wall. And I'm going to show you why here in just a minute. You want to record for me, Clayton? Yeah. All right. I got the man with the plan. All right. So what I'm gonna do, uncover all this. And if you look, if you look right here, you see that? That's a little plug. See the screwdriver? Pop that up. And there's a little screw in there. And you take this off, and there's four screws there. So what we do, take our handy dandy screwdriver. Get that out of the way. All right. Now the reason I did that, believe it or not, it shouldn't have been that hard but I'll sweat <laughs> uh, now when we go to hang it we can attach the line set and everything without the cover being in the way we can hang it on the wall attach the line set snap everything in place and then put the cover back in so normally <laughs> they're not that hard to take the cover off usually they snap right off I don't know what I was doing wrong but uh, next thing we're going to do, so I want this like right here. Like a so. And again, I can't really put a level on it because the trailer is not level. So what I'm going to do is mark it 
and then I'll uh, go from this mark down to here and just measure up and, and level up the bracket to that because if I level it up to the ground with the level, this could end up sitting like that. So I want to be careful. And, or you could have been smart and leveled the trailer beforehand, but I'm not that smart. But, but at least I'm smart enough to think about it beforehand, right? Um, and, all right, so this bracket, the back of that slides down on top of this and snaps in place. Um, what you'll need to do is we'll measure, let's flip this over. Now that you have this cover off, make sure you're not hard on this coal right here, okay? You don't want to bend this coal up. This is your temperature, your coal discharge temperature probe, so you don't want to mess that up either. So just, all, all I'm saying is just be careful with everything. Like, don't just go jarring it around. So what we'll do... What was that? Mm -hmm. Something fell out in it. A piece of plastic. I probably broke it. <laughs> um... Probably trying to get that cover off. So, so what we're going to do is we know that's sitting right at the very bottom of this. Like it's not even a quarter inch between the bottom of this and this bracket. So what I can do is measure from the bottom. If I try to measure from the top, it's kind of hard to tell. I mean, I could add some, but I don't want to do it that way. So I ran the mark. I want that bracket to be on the bottom of that, but I also want it centered right here. This is off the center hole. So it's 13 inches that way, huh. 18 and a half inches that way. Go figure. So not what I was expecting on the center. We'll do this is this side. I'm gonna go 13 inches. I don't even know where that screw hole is. Let's see if we can find it. It's right here. So 13 inches is there. So we want the center of that one to be at eight and three quarters. So we'll center this bracket at eight and three and quarter. And then we'll I got it. Yeah. So kinda want it right there. We'll go eight and three quarter, which is right there. This is wow, well, eight and three quarters is weird. There's the center of my first bracket. Right there. That's a that's a professional calculation right there. Will you hold that? Right. Why'd you let me drop the screw? <laughs>
so. Alright, you can let go. It ain't going anywhere. This should be, yeah, eight and seven eighths, because the bottom of the plastic is down a little bit, so it should be okay. Um, Goodness, I'm struggling today, Clayton. Is it the heat? All right, we went backwards. Um, started running the line set, started hooking it up, and I forgot one thing, the drain. Um, so, and I wanted to show you this because it's kind of important. Right underneath here is, this is your drain line for your water, condensate water. Right underneath here is this bracket. Now, every air conditioner I've ever installed, and this one included, has two drain outlets. All you do is pull this plug out. All right. Save this plug, do not throw it away. This one here, this is the tricky part. Don't don't forget, don't try to yank this off. Just take a screwdriver, flip that over like that. That's your lock. And then you should be able to work this out. And put the camera down all right so cut out there i had to go get some screws uh from when i shut it off to now all i did was put uh four more screws in and then i simply set this on the bracket um i'm actually pretty happy with the way it lined up it's straight there to there now now sorry I keep turning the fan on and then I feel like I'm yelling over it. This bracket, as you see right here, I don't have it snapped down inside. Because now, like I said, this whole purpose of me struggling with taking this whole cover off was, now I can get to the line set and I can run the wires and all this stuff and this cover isn't in the way. Um, it, like I, said, I struggled a little bit more than I'm used to. Like most of the time they just, you take the screws off and slides right off. This one's new to me, but whatever, it's off. Now, um, for anybody that's never installed an air conditioner, this coil should be charged with nitrogen because this is not a pre-charged line set. Um, and I'll get more into that in a minute. But these red, um, this little red dot right here tells me that this is nitrogen filled. And of course, the line set doesn't have, again, refrigerant in it. So that means that when you take this off, we're gonna do it right now. Let's, we'll just listen for the hiss. Spare pliers. I might have to put the phone down because I might have to hold the line set. Yeah. All right, hold on one second. All right, I'm gonna try to be fancy and hold this. Nope. Let's see if I can set the camera up. I don't have a tripod on me right now. Hold on. The whole purpose is I want y'all to hear the hear the nitrogen. Give me one second. I broke it loose, so hopefully some nitrogen will come out with that. You ready? There it is. Again, that is nitrogen. It will not hurt you. Do not be alarmed. That is actually a very, very good sign. That means that that coal right there does not have a leak in it up until that point. So that's why I try to make it so adamant on you hearing that. They fill it with that cap right there and they put enough pressure in there, pressure test it, and so forth. So let me, uh, again, I'm struggling today. I don't have a tripod um, at the moment. I'm going to straighten out the line set 
run it up through my hole up right there and over. I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the drain line and run the cables out and I'll turn the camera back on and show you what I've done because there's really no point in me staring. No point in staring at me struggle on this. So give me a, a minute and you'll see what it looks like when I come back. All right, we went backwards. Um, started running the line set, started hooking it up and I forgot one thing, the drain. Um, so, and I wanted to show you this because it's kind of important. Right underneath here is, this is your drain line for your water, condensate water. Right underneath here is this bracket. Now, every air conditioner I've ever installed, and this one included, has two drain outlets. All you do is pull this plug out, all right? Save this plug, do not throw it away. This one here, this is the tricky part. Don't, don't forget, don't try to yank this off. Just take a screwdriver, flip that over like that, that's your lock. And then, you should be able to work this out. I'm gonna put the camera down. All right, so once I undid that lock, um, don't yank on this. This little piece of plastic in here will break. It just worked it off really slow. Once I got this off, all you got to do, come over here, and reverse the order, and just work it on. And then, you'll take this lock and keep working it on. Sorry, horrible cameraman in. There we go. Keep working until you can get that lock on like so it's locked on and then remember that corded or plug i told you not to throw away don't forget because i have in the past forgot and i was doing this for a customer forgot to put that plug back in and made a mess on the wall that wasn't cool oh come on in there I'm struggling, but you get the point. I'm gonna put that back in and hang it on the wall. I'll be right back. All right, so we made it outside. Um, started setting up the bracket. Um, but real quick, I wanted to talk about why I chose what side of the V-nose. Well, first, the condenser actually fits right here. Um, it fits in the middle with actually good airflow on either side. But the problem is, I would have had to relocate my battery. I would have had to relocate my emergency brake disconnect. And I would have had to buy a new jack electric winch, or not winch, jack, um, because this won't turn, obviously, with the, um, the condenser in a way. So I thought, I considered all that, but I was like, boy, that's a lot really aggravating where I could just put a bracket on the wall. Now why? You have a V? I could have done here or there. I've seen them on both sides. Why did I do this side? Honestly, when I back the trailer up, I'm more comfortable backing up most of the time onto the driver's side because I can see where I'm pointing that corner and I know that side's my blind side. And yes, I can I can back up with the right mirror easily. I, I, I can back up pretty decently anyways, but I'm more comfortable backing up the driver way. Um, and that, that being said, this side is always closer to the truck than that side because I'm always backing up that direction. So why, why not put it over there? Um, just to get it out of my way for when I'm backing up. And then the other thing is the compressor is right behind that trade-in sign. So that side's heavier and I felt like it made more sense to put the heavier side towards the frame, towards the inside of the uh, trailer. It probably doesn't make a lick of difference, but to me, that's what I felt like was best. So, real quick, um, this bracket, 
if you are mounting one of these on your house or on a trailer or whatever you do, this is just a quick tip that I've learned over the years. You can do all types of measuring. You can center up those arms and those arms and measure between that, fit, that foot and those and blah, 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 cross-reference, triangulate, trigonometry. Or you set this here, right there, and you set this here, right there. Just like that then you center up your bar right so you know where it's at now what I'll do is I'll measure from there to there so this is square from there to there and then I'll measure from the center to there center to there make sure it's square and then I have a marker and the marker edges right here this this way is what you'll be facing so you just run a line right there and a line right there that way when you go hang it on your wall you're not doing all that up there it's already done so you just hang this bracket on the wall with those already on it then you can um you know run your bolts through and everything and when you go to set this on there it lines up perfectly every time so uh i hope that little tip helped everybody what i'm gonna do now is i made my mark earlier that i talked about I'm going to make two measurements, take my level, run it across, give me a line, and that's where the bottom of that should line up with that line. And these are studs inside the trailer, so I want each bracket to line up with a stud so I can run lag bolts through there, and then I'm going to run two more bolts all the way through the wall to the other side. And I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom brackets. So let's get started and I'll uh, pick up the camera when I can or hopefully Clayton will come back out here and hold the camera for me. Um, either way, let's get it done. All right. So I got the bracket mounted. Um, as you can see, not level, but it is straight with the trailer. Um, even if you go back that's the same distance as that and then um, these are everything squared the way it should be to this so the next thing to do is mount the condenser on there and then um, I didn't mention it before but these arms are like way 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 long so after we mount it I'll take a sawzall or a cutoff wheel and cut these shorter all right uh, let me uh, get these or get the condenser mounted and I'll uh, pick the camera back up all right there she is in all her glory bolted up um i did want to tell you about these i forgot but um these are flare joint actually this one's not tight yet this is a flare obviously um but if you didn't know that what this does is it seals to this um so I got it on my finger. When you um, when you tighten these down, you need to put a little bit of oil around the outside and just a dab on the inside. I'm not talking about fill it up with oil. I'm just talking about a dab. And what you do is you want to set it on there and don't force this. Don't you know? Just take your time. Make sure it screws on very easily. Hold this down when you do it. Make sure it stays seated. And then what happens is when you tighten this down. Um, the oil lets it lets it slip a little bit instead of grabbing and like bending the flare or anything You want it just just to slip just enough to where when it tightens down and seals And you're not bending the copper up now. You don't have to go super tight when uh When I used to do this for a living, I used to actually have a um, torque wrench um, But the last job provided it to me so I couldn't take it home with me But uh, and I never bought my own but anyways it uh you would actually torque these down to like I think 15 inch pounds or something like that, 12 inch pounds. So it's not a lot. So it's it's literally like that's tight right there. I'll take a crescent wrench and snug it up a little bit more, maybe half a turn, maybe. And it's kind of by feel, so you don't want to go too tight. All right. Uh, uh, so far, I'm kind of impressed. This is a cheaper line set, but it's the length was super perfect. Like I didn't have to cut it. It come out underneath the trailer. And this 90 was kind of hard. 
Now, these copper lines will kink, so you can't just go and just like bend it. You know, it'll kink right there, so you gotta take your time and work it around, work it around, work it around. Because if you kink this, the um, it's not gonna work right. So make sure you don't kink this, take your time if you have to do any type of 90 like that. And uh, you want 12 feet of line set minimum, 12 feet. Now that that's for refrigeration um, pressures and the oil circulation. Um, that most of these 12,000 B2s or bigger, you want minimum 12 feet of line set. So if it comes with a 12 foot line set, try to use all of it. If you can't, you can't, but try to use all of it. Anyways, um, I'm not gonna lie, I'm actually kind of impressed so far. Um, everything's going very well, knock on wood. But uh, it, it's for a $500 eBay unit, everything's well thought out and I'm actually liking it. Um, the only thing they didn't do is label these, which is not a big deal because you can see one is twice the size of the other. But just make sure you wire these up properly. So inside the unit, inside the air handler inside, it was brown, blue, brown, blue. Um, see right there, one, two, three, four, right? So this is your power. And if you actually go and look, your big wire is on one and two. So just make sure that you do the big wire, which is your power wire for one and two. And again, like I said earlier, three and four is your communication. So um, make sure that you wire those up. But like I said, everything was pre-terminated. These are the exact same length as the, the line set. So what I'm gonna do is um, zip tie these along the line set up and underneath there and you won't even see them. They'll be tucked out of the way. That's the drain line. I'll cut it um, about a six inches underneath the trailer so it'll drip. I haven't cut it yet, so that's why it's just hanging there. So the next step is where I might lose a lot of y'all. But don't don't let it discourage you from wanting to do this type of job on your own. Um, you have to pull a vacuum on this line set and the air handler inside. Remember when I let all that nitrogen out? Well, now that coil is full of air. You you do not want to compress or introduce air into this into the system air is a very very bad thing i've heard a lot of people say oh it'll be fine just charge it blah 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 whatever just let it out do please do not you will destroy your compressor um so you need an adapter to go here to a refrigeration line uh to a, uh, a gauges some uh, refrigerant line gauges and then um, a vacuum pump now i know 90 percent of y'all that have enough diy experience probably have an hvac friend if you pay someone 50 bucks to come pull a vacuum or whatever it might be just say hey everything's installed everything's done i just need you to come pull a vacuum for me shoot some of them might not even charge you if you're friends with someone offer them some cash and they might come do it or uh whatever um but so don't skip that step Make sure you do it, and I'm going to show you what it looks like um, here in just a second. So I'm going to go get all my stuff. Well, first I'm going to zip tie all that stuff up. Then I'm going to go get my gauges, and I'm going to start pulling a vacuum. We'll be right back. <clears throat> all right, so I'm back. Um, I got everything zip tied up. Even fixed the drain line over there. Um, here's a vacuum pump. Now, this is a little bit more expensive one. Um, but again, I did this. This is... Uh, it's a 5 CFM. You can go to Harbor Freight and buy 2.5 CFM um, for like, I don't know, inflation now, probably 80 bucks, 90 bucks. My first one when I first started doing HVAC was from Harbor Freight, and I think I spent like $55 on it. And it worked, it did the job, but it just took longer. Um, but again, if, if you want to do something like that, you don't have to have the gauges to just pull a vacuum, you just need a hose and a vacuum pump and how much I would highly suggest at least a micron gauge and I'll show you what that is here in a second um, and technically I should have vacuum pump hoses on here but mine are old and the seals are rotten and these are not so uh, don't don't fault me for that in the comments you can if you want to but I just don't have vacuum pump hoses anyways um, all right so what we're gonna do is we got everything hooked up we got oil in it um we got a little bit of a charge in it because there was some in my hoses and i figured why not um i'll throw it in there and it's been holding 12 psi 
this whole time so that's not much psi but I'm pretty sure it's not it doesn't have a massive leak in it somewhere um so we'll open this up i just let everything out in the atmosphere which was like literally the amount in the hose and we'll turn this on and then as you can see it's starting to pull a negative and it'll go into microns here in a second you can still hear the pump You may not can hear it, I can hear the tone changing. I don't know if you can hear that, but anyways, what that's doing is actually pulling the air out and here in a second, it'll be in a true vacuum. Um, make sure all your hoses are tight. Make sure your hoses are tight here. This is that adapter I was talking about. Mini splits, for some reason, they love to have, have a mini split fitting on there and you have to have this adapter. I wish they'd change that, but anyways, I, I happen to have a couple of them. Um, behind here, there's your Allen wrenches, or Allen wrench. It's an Allen nut. It's your, this is your service valve. If you look down in there, see, there's an Allen. You'll take an Allen wrench and you'll let, you'll open this one up uh, well, you let your liquid out first, and then you open. Then you let your suction out second. Crack that open, let it let it charge, but don't do that until the vacuum's done and this line is removed. Um, because you let all your refrigerant out into the vacuum pump and into the atmosphere. So don't do that. But I'm just telling you while I'm waiting, just to make sure that uh, you have an Allen wrench for that, and it's metric. It's always metric. So don't try to use a standard Allen wrench because sometimes they're stupid tight and you'll strip it trying to get it open. So, all right, microns. Right now, 1,400 microns. Um, usually I try to get down into the hundreds, um, four or 500, and um, it takes a little while. So be patient here. I'm gonna turn the camera off, tidy up some stuff, and I'm gonna go find the cord for inside so I can actually run this thing. So we'll let this run for about 20 minutes and uh, get a, every little bit of air and moisture out of there. And then we'll fire it up. I still got to cut these two, but I'll do that later. All right, we'll be back. All right, we're back. I got my Allen wrench. Haven't opened it yet. We're down. That'll actually drop. Um, we're still pulling a vacuum. When I close my valve, it should drop. I hope so anyways. There it goes. That's because I don't have a true vacuum hose on there. Um, it actually starts creating a vacuum on the line. Um, I don't know, it's weird. If I had my black hoses on there, it never did that. But when I have these hoses on there, it does that. If someone actually knows why that happens, you can explain to me in the, in the um, comments. But uh, I don't care, I'm still pulling a really good vacuum. It's 355 microns. Close this off. Turn that off. And we will all right. We are good to go. So next thing to do, I'll close this valve off here. Now some of these have a Schrader valve inside here and some of them are right here. So I don't, I don't even remember what this one was. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it off here because I don't know if there's a Schrader valve in there. There probably is, but I don't remember. So take it off really fast. Try not to let it suck in too much air. See, and then, cause there's a Schrader valve right there. Um, let's find out, curious. Yep, it's got a Schrader valve. So I could have took the hose off and left that there, but I'm okay, either way. So put all my stuff back on. Now, like I said, crack this open slowly. Feel for any leaks. I didn't hear anything. Step inside. I don't hear any leaks, so we're good to go. I 
put an end on it. I'll explain that here in a minute. So now all the refrigerant is in this line set. Open this all the way up. Inside here, there's a little ring right there. You see that little silver ring right there? That seats that valve against that right there and keeps it from leaking. So make sure you open it all the way up. Don't crank down on it tight, but just snug it up just a little bit. And then let this one go. You won't hear nothing because all the line, the, it's, um, it's equalized to right there. So we'll uh, snug that down, put our caps back on, and guess what? We will go inside and put power on this thing. So, got everything off there. I gotta plug the trailer back in, and uh, let's go inside. All right, uh, I'm probably a little too excited for no reason. Anyways, um, like I said, very temporary. I don't like this, this is not. But I wanna wire up the trailer, like I said, with the breaker box, but why not have the AC on? So if this works fine, I will let it run. Then I'll mount the um, I'll mount the breaker box here somewhere after I figure out where I'm putting my benches back. And I bought a new plug that goes through the wall for a 30 amp plug and it'll be really close here so there won't be any really long runs from um, there won't be any really long runs from from the, the AC power to the breaker box. So I feel better about that. But let's plug it in. Let's hope we don't see no smoke. Oop, I hear beeping. So, um, might not be able to see it because of the, let's turn it on. There we go. Um, don't know how to change it to Celsius. Have to read the instructions. But, it's blowing. The... Oop, I heard the compressor kick on. What's 26C? I don't know. <laughs> um, I'll figure out how to change that to Fahrenheit. If not, I'll just have to learn how to convert it. But either way, we got cold air. And it's fantastic already. Okay. Turn it up turbo. Then we could um, do the swing. Let's see, what is that going to do? Oh, yeah. Let's go outside. And it's running. It's so quiet. It's actually quieter than the little temporary AC that was in there. So I'm super, super pleased with this already. Um, let me get all my junk cleaned up and I'll talk about it a little bit more. Not that I've talked enough and um, We'll close this video up. I hope you all enjoyed it so far. All right, the instructions say to hold these two buttons. Whew, changed it, 79 degrees. I guess I should have done that. There we go, 79 degrees. Oh, let's turn it down. Yes, all right. We got everything running good. I love it. Well, that's it. Um, as you can see behind me, it's running. Um, I'm actually really impressed. Um, you know, you kind of, when you buy stuff, you like, you get what you pay for kind of stuff. I did this in a day, believe it or not, I had to change my shirt. Um, it was super muggy and poured on us and I got wet and sweaty. Anyways, I've taken a shower, come out here, and uh, this thing is impressive. It's already 72 degrees in here. The compressor cycled on and off a few times. Um, I've mounted the remote right there. And what I'm going to do is, like I said, I've took all this apart. I'm going to lower that bracket down three or four inches, and I'm going to lower this one down three or four inches. And I'm going to take these bottom brackets um, off. I don't think I need these yet. 
Um, I might use them, but oh, I'm not going to throw them away for sure, but I'm, I just don't know what I want to do with them yet. I haven't really needed them underneath yet. Um, <clears throat> anyways, I got to mount the screen and then I'm going to mop the floor again and all that and have this thing cleaned up. But, and then, um, I'm going to get some foam and fill that hole up. But for inside, very, very pleased. Let's go outside. And I mean, it's legit cold in here. I don't even know how else to explain it. And then, there's the compressor running. I cut the legs off shorter. I got these bolts tight. And uh, I was like, at first, I almost decided not to because I was like, whoa, it can slide, whatever. But these bolts back here, they can't slide forward. And what I may do, this is just um, galvanized, I guess, whatever type of steel, uh, mild steel. I might take and take, uh, cut a piece of flat stock and tack weld it right there and then repaint it white. That, that way it can't slide. Um, and you can see the compressor just cycled off. So that being said, uh, I'm happy with it. I hope you got some information out of this. And, um, if you have any questions, post them up in the comment, or if there's something that you think could have been done differently, I'll even take that type of advice. But like I said, it was a budget build. I'm happy with it. Um, and now we can go racing and have some AC in the trailer that'll keep up. So, so again, thank you all for watching. If you made it this far and listen to all my blabber and I hope you learned something. There's Clayton. Say hey, buddy. Hey. Um, and uh, like I said, it's been a long time since I've done a video. So I was kind of excited to do this one and I'm glad it went out in one day. Um, you know, you kind of expect when you install an air conditioner that, you know, you kind of run into trouble. But everything went smooth. Wall bracket um, and ran the, the line set and um i did forget to tell you i ran well let me flip i ran through bolts all the way through um there's six bolts on the bracket they're stainless steel bolts uh with nylocks on the other side this is three quarter inch plywood so i feel like it's plenty strong enough to main hold it but what i'm gonna do is get some flat stock measure the distance and i want to take these back off and just one at a time slide them off put a piece of flat stock on all three that way it has some more pulling force against the wall so because we are going to go down the road with this so i just kind of want to make it as supported as possible you know going down the road anyways that's it thank y'all make sure you like and subscribe oh wait that's what you say like and subscribe <laughs> so um hopefully we get back we got some more projects coming up and uh, we'll get them done We'll talk to you all later. Say bye. Bye.